few moments, church, I want to talk to you about this subject. It's time to stand. Did you hear me? I said it is time to stand. Whatever that looks like to you, proverbially, religiously, denominationally, spiritually, or politically, I said it's time to stand. Now, let me just hover for a moment before we get to the text and say this. The other day, I got off the plane and I went to Tulsa. I don't travel by myself a lot, but I knew there'd be a lot of security there and a lot of things going on. And I mean, it was a star-studded event. I showed up, felt like a ham sandwich in a synagogue. Man, I'm telling you, I just didn't fit. I mean, they were everywhere. If you could hear about them on social media, they were there. And so 50,000 people tried to buy tickets in the first four days. They sold 4,500 tickets, sold out flat. I took this little bitty old box of books, and I told my wife I could have sold a truckload of them suckers there. And so I showed up, and I was one, and some of you saw it. I was a, a first speaker, and I was a last speaker. As a matter of fact, it was interesting. I stood on the platform. One of our men actually captured the footage of it on his phone. And uh, I stood on the platform at the end of the first night, thousands of people all around. And they said, we want you to treat this auditorium. And it was a massive auditorium, Rainbow Bible Church and Rainbow Bible College. They said, we want you to treat this just like you would your tent on Sunday morning and get up and give a gospel invitation. After all that political stuff, because I told him, I said, look, what good is it going to do you to save the republic and then go to hell yourself, right? And so I got up, man, and I was able to give the gospel, and I thought it was interesting. I'm standing on this side of the lectern giving the gospel. Lynn Wood standing on this side, got his little hat off, you know. He just got through talking to the people, and I got through giving the gospel, and he prayed and closed the whole thing out, and I walked away, and I thought, how in the world did I get yoked up with this crowd? Amen? But that afternoon, about 1.30, they threw me up there and they said, we want you to talk about the fact that your book says this means war. We will not surrender through silence. Get up and talk about the churches needing to be open. Get up and talk about stiffening the backbone of God's men and pastors around the nation. And so I got up, and they were much like us. Man, they were on their feet. They were happy, clappy. They were jumping. I thought, man, they're going to run all over this place. But, you know, sometimes you get an experience in life that, number one, you didn't anticipate. It just came out of left field. And it changes you. I mean, sometimes it just happens Johnny on the spot. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm like right in the middle of it. And I can think about a lot of stuff while I'm preaching. But I mean, I'm right in the middle of it. Of course, you know, I'd been going and I was exhausted. And, and so even though my voice is a, a, just a little bit raw this morning, it was a lot more raw then. They had that mic turned up. And man, I'm telling you, I was just in the moment, right? I was just in the zone. And I mean, they were clapping and shouting and hollering. And then it happened. 4,500 people in that auditorium, 600 people walking around, book tables and security all over the place. Two or 300 people on the platform, looked like a big old choir, all the VIPs up there. I turned around and preached to them too. And so I, I was in the middle of it. I was doing one of them little dances like I do sometimes under the tent. I mean, I was just throwing down. having a good, I was enjoying myself. I thought, man, for 25 minutes, I wish I had an hour in 25 minutes. And so while I was preaching, I got to that part where I said, look, I'm telling you, it is time that we stand up and we take this nation back and we quit giving them our rights and we've got to open every church, open every And I went on. And then when I did that, it's not that they hadn't stood yet. They had been standing. They had been clapping. We, we're used to that right here. I enjoy it. I can preach without it, but I like it. But when I told these people that we are watchmen on the wall, and that we are called to stand and push back against the wicked, evil, nefarious, you know, globalist agenda that's come against the church in America. These people stood to their feet. And I'm telling you, in one mass choir behind me, around me, beside me, above me, beneath me, everywhere, in the balcony. I mean, these people just began to chant and just began to cheer and just began to clap and began to holler. And in the midst of it, without anybody saying a word, there were about 30 people in that building. They just randomly, in and of themselves, had brought shofars with them. That thing used to scare me till I realized what it meant in the Bible. And the prophetic symbolism with it. Now, I mean, I'm up there preaching in a big way, having myself a big time, because I like to have a big time when I talk about Jesus and the Bible. And man, I'm up there, rah, rah, bitch, and they're shouting, they're hollering, I mean, they're clapping, and about 30 of them people let loose on them shofars while I was preaching. Man, I'm telling you, I'd like to stop and see that Jesus was coming. I'd never been in anything like that in my life. It was an electrifying experience. I like to preach out of my shoes, Buford. I mean, it was crazy. I mean, 20, 30, ooh, I mean, they was a blowing them, and I, man, I felt like Mel Gibson. I was about to take over everything. I 
was looking for a horse to ride in that place. I was so excited. But it showed me that there's a lot more of us standing than the left wants us to believe, ladies and gentlemen. And it is time for war. It is time to stand. It is time to fight. It is time to pray. It is time to fight. There's no time to back up. There's no armor for the back of a Christian because you're not supposed to be in retreat and God's got your back. We're not running from the enemy. We're running to the enemy. We're not scared of their taunts and their bullets. We're not scared of their nonsense. Man, I know I'm pretty bold, but man, when them people stood up and started blowing them shofars while I'm preaching, something cool happened in me. You better be glad my voice is a little bit weak. Whew, man, I feel like setting this whole tent on fire this morning in the glory of the gospel. Man, I came back with a, a new baptism of boldness in me. A new excitement I've never had before. Whew, man, I'm telling you, last week we threw that man out of a tent. Man, I love all of you. Don't mess with me. I feel like I can throw out 50 of you this morning, amen. Man, we ain't playing anymore. I'm telling you, I've come too far to turn back. Now it's time to stay in church. It's time to stay. So let's get to the text because the Bible is more important than what I got to say. Daniel chapter 